Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct, the Rands build. As I mentioned in the wrap up of the last video, part one, this is part two of the wing build video. We've flipped it. Apologies, I didn't get a lot of the video for that. My battery died halfway through the recording of that. I was really just focused on uh, everything. There's a lot to think about when you're flipping the wing. Let's talk about some of the reason why the wing skin is not on. We did put it on momentarily. And then once I had it on, I had an uneasy feeling. I just did not have the wires wrapped up like I want them to. I'll show you that here in a second. And I just kind of want to think through the mounting and the location of the pitot tube, as well as another main reason is you can see one of the stringers is laying right there. Um, the notch that I cut out for the wing truss isn't quite in the right location. It's off by about a quarter of an inch. So I just got to um, work on that a little bit more, put that stringer back in place and then file out some of the notches for the hinges and then we'll be ready to go to get the wing skin back on start click going it start riveting it in place um, and then getting some of the surface holes put on and back to the instructions to figure out what else i'm missing and of course the truss is um, in the way right there so you gotta um, cut a notch in it and based upon Flexion in the rib right here. I didn't quite get it right the first time. So I marked it off a little bit on this side. I'm gonna uh, take the Dremel and then file to it to make sure it fits nice and uh, has a lot of good clearance because you don't want it rubbing. And then it sits up just a hair. So if that were centered, that'd be good, but it's actually gonna be mounted about like that. So back to the Dremel, back to the files. Now that that's set, I'm gonna move on to tidying up the wires. And I have also have to install the little serrated nylon gasket in these two holes there and there. And in the instructions, it doesn't say to. You, where the only place to find it is in the figures manual. So that's the place that talks about the serrated gasket going in these two circles. But in my opinion, that's not good enough. I wanted a sleeve to protect the wires. Here's what I'm talking about. I did see another YouTuber, I think S21 Project, use this stuff. It is half inch uh, by 10 feet and costs a lot. It was almost like 30 bucks. Mail ordered it, it was here like two days later. Um, but it's super tough stuff. Wires will go into that from the wing root through um, the, se the first, second rib and then up until the first gasket right there, at which point I'll have some electrical tape wrapping that up. Okay, we've mocked up the Gretz AOA backing plate um, and we're just transfer drilling through the angle bracket into the rib and then we'll click everything up and then match drill the Gretz bracket down into the angle plate. So the level is mimicking the skin right now. Alright, I'm pulling everything apart, deburr, open up this a little bit such that the grits fitting fits in smoothly because right now it's a little bit tight. So now we are here's the, upsizing to number 30. This is taped super securely in place. We'll put the skin over it, mark it. Oh, we know. have the skin test fit <laughs> for two reasons. Number one is we wanna ensure that <clears throat> there's ample margin between the hinges and the skin. And if not, when we take off the skin, I'll kind of file them down. So we're gonna mark those. And number two is, okay, that's a live shot. <laughs> I've got my cell phone in that inspection hole. Apple Airplane to my Apple TV right there so that we can use the felt tip marker and mark all the holes for the pitot installation, which is taped in place right here securely such that it didn't budge <clears throat> when we put the skin down and click coat everything on. Look over my shoulder and do surgery. This is like what surgeons do, I think. This is why I'm not a surgeon. Well, among many reasons. Harder than it looks. Maybe if I hold it, let me feel. Hey! 
Now hopefully the ink actually works. So again, I'm drilling the number 40 so that any sort of imperfections hopefully come out when we upsize to 30. Skin is back off. We flipped it over so that we can work on this. I think there's one hole we missed, but that's okay. I can take the bracket off and kind of align everything. So we put some uh, two by twos underneath to support this. Got it clicoed in place. And now we're just gonna do, um, we're gonna work on the airfoil shape for the actual grits fitting. Now I just gotta figure out how long to cut these and how to bend them. We have been talking a lot about pedo brackets, but let's shift to the pedo system itself and actually bend some tubes. One really, really cool thing about a, uh, experimental aviation that I'm learning is that people are so friendly and they're so willing to help. One of the YouTube viewers um, reached out to me and introduced me to an awesome asset on Bend Airfield. He worked for Lance Air for a number of years and then went into his own uh, business developing and, and building awesome airplanes. So Mike, hello, thank you for your help and guidance. He's lending me a tube cutter as well as the the flaring machine device uh, for the tube, 37 degree tube flare that's required for this setup. He also gave me a practice set, uh, piece of tube. This was a quarter inch. I've got five sixteenths. So we'll make sure that the this device is set up <clears throat> to bend or to flare my tubes before doing it. Couple of things as I've kind of been playing with this and thinking this process through is this is um, this metal is pretty fragile and if you bend it more than once it'll harden and and become very very brittle so you want to get it right on the first try but it bends pretty darn easily let me review i've got a garmin gap 26 gap 26 the gretz mount system and then the dynon pedo aoa installation kit so that requires um, this to be bent and then flared such that you can use this, this equipment. I don't know if you're gonna be able to slide it on if it's, it, the, the radius minimum is 1.5 inches per the specs on Garmin. The Garmin specs is a radius of 1.5 inches. That's a diameter of three inches. Well, guess what, this Bend Oregon company, Hydroflask, happens to put out uh, a lot of um, products that have just about three inch diameter. So that's gonna work perfectly to be our guide. Let's see, what else am I thinking? Where do we bend? How far do we go? Because you wanna be able to slide this on and off for maintenance or what, whatever reason. Okay, well how long is this neck? Let's measure that and I'll show you why <clears throat> in a second. That is, be nice if it was metric, because it's right on the money, two centimeters, but we'll call it three quarters, three quarters of an inch. So I don't want to start my bend right there. I want to start at about three quarters of an inch up, because I want to be able to slide it out. Mind you, these tubes are going to be bent, and then you can work this, uh, the bends out through the top of this and remove the pitot tube. Okay, if it's unclear right now, hopefully it'll be clear in a little bit. This is a little bit finicky um, to work with, so a pair of vice grips helps, but remember, you don't wanna do that to this really soft metal on the part that you're keeping. So if you're gonna grip them, grip them on the part that's gonna get tossed away. Okay, um, kind of last thing that I've kind of been thinking through <clears throat> is circumference, okay? So three inch diameter, pi times three is about 9.4. That's gonna be the circumference of the circle. We're only using a half of the circle. I'm bending this 90 degrees, actually this way. Uh, that's about 2.35 inches. So from wherever I start bending it, uh, the termination is gonna be about 2.35 inches up. So I'll kind of mark that. I don't wanna cut it necessarily yet. I might cut one a little bit shorter, do bend a, a bend once, and then flare one, and then uh, flare the other, then bend the other, because I don't want to be messing with them close together like they are right now, or both bent together. 
Um, I also don't want to bend them in the same axis, right? Because they'll interfere with each other if I bend them straight back towards the stern of the aircraft. So I'm going to bend the closer one to the aft straight back, and then, which happens to be the AOA line. The longer one for the Garmin is the airspeed line. So that one will bend a few degrees off so that they don't interfere with each other. I also, in the, the Dynon kit, they gave the tubes, the three tubes, the AOA, the pedo, and the static line. This is a static line. They give you more static line, and they give you this little cutter. So I wanted to kind of cut off a piece just to mess with as we play with the installation. So this looks pretty easy, just easy peasy. So once again, we've got a part of the Dynon kit right here. That'll be obvious how it goes on here in a second, but you want to make sure and get these pieces before flaring them. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark the spot on here equal to the termination of the Gretz mount. Okay, do away with this for a while. The next mark I'd like to make, well, is we know we're not going to mess with this area, so let's write AOA and pedo, if you can. I'm gonna put on my glasses for this. Okay, next thing is I'm gonna mark three quarters of an inch, so transfer essentially this distance, three quarters up here. So that's gonna be where the bend begins. You don't wanna do the bend too far up because uh, I think it'll be kind of cum cumbersome to get the <coughs> pedo tube out of the Gretz mount upon maintenance or installation. Okay, so that looks good. So that'll be the beginning of our bend. And then what did I say? The termination is about 2.35 or so. So one, 2.3 looks to be about right there. So that's gonna be about the end of the bend. And then now we can cut outside of that and then flare that. So the middle of the bend is where I want to set up this. Make sure you're going the right way. <laughs> okay, so I want to go towards the aft of the aircraft. I can't see the marks, so I gotta transfer them. AOA is gonna go straight back, so we wanna have the pitot tube flat on the surface. Be nice if I could reach in there, but I can't, so. Definitely not the best bend, but it'll do. Um, but I think right now would be a good time to cut this guy. Cool. So this is gonna mount up again next to a rib. So I don't, oh, this is one goes straight aft and then this one's gonna go kind of into the cavity of the aircraft. Okay, pretty good. I wish I would have cut it before I bent it because now this other tube is interfering because it's on axis with it. Yep, way too long. Okay, figured it out. It's 3 sixteenths, not 5 sixteenths. Slid the collar back a little bit so that I can actually get in the tool.
Okay, that fits in pretty good. Okay, there's the final product, sort of. That's just a obviously a test fit of a of the AOA tube. Actually, a static line, but it's on the AOA line. There's the pedo line, uh, and it fits. And it obviously the Gretz mount slides over the top with uh, you know little little fudge in here and in there. But there we go. To remove tube from this sort of a fitting, all you gotta do is pull in the the plastic fitting and that kind of unlocks it but you just push it in nice and locked nice and secure and you can remove it we've got that rough cut now i'm going to work I've got these marked where they need to be trimmed a little bit <clears throat> filed a little bit so i'm going to work on that working on tidying up the wing it's Actually, strangely um, satisfying. I'll show you what, what I mean. But first, I'll show you what I did to kind of hang the landing light wires. I made that little tab, riveted it in place, put a snap bushing in place, heat shrink some tubing around it, and then uh, attached a couple zip ties to it. The zip ties I bought specifically for this purpose are good for wider diameter. They sucked on that small uh, 3 8 diameter um, bundle. And then, so what I said was satisfying is using this fun stuff. This um, is um, spiral wrap and it is awesome. So it's quarter inch right now, <clears throat> but it goes up to two inches or it wraps a bundle up to two inches. And so there's an example. Didn't quite. So I wasn't sure uh, how much more it was going to take because it starts at a quarter inch and then of course it has to go a longer distance with any bundle that's greater than a quarter inch. So I added 15% here and still got short. So I'm adding 25% on this next run right here. So we'll see how um, that goes. This run between ribs, what is that? Six, uh, seven and eight, where the aileron is, is uh, aileron belt crank is, is 12 inches, so I added three inches, 25%, and we'll see if that's right. It's gonna be a little bit finicky messing with this, but show you how it is done, and it's feeling a lot better just not having these wires um, flopping around in the breeze, if you will. Hopefully there's no breeze, but you know what I mean. can't wrap too much uh, if you intend on pushing it at all. So let me unwrap some and then you can, there you go, get it kind of in, in towards the grommet. Takes a little time, but I imagine I could have bought, you know, an eight bundle wire or more, <laughs> I think smartly would have been a, a four conductor cable, if you will. Maybe I'll do that for the right wing. But I think this is a decent option. Feeling pretty comfortable with the kind of fit and finish of it. And this is high temperature rated as well. I don't know what the temperature is, but fire resistant. So that feels a lot better. I'm not gonna have a stray wire get in the way of an aileron cable, flight control cable. This is this performance braid loom, if you will.
Man, lots of progress today. I am super excited about how this is looking. Pitot tube brackets are all done. One kind of bigger thing I still have to do is the brackets to connect the lift strut to the truss have to be kind of match drilled with some uh, larger bits. So I've got to work on that. But honestly, um, I think we're going to be skinning this bottom left wing here in probably two days. Charge to knock that out and then onto the right wing. Lather, rinse, repeat. It'll be a lot easier because all the um, belt cranks are done. I learned a lot. The struts, uh, excuse me, the spars are pretty well done as well as there's no pitot tube. All I have to do is, well, landing light, wingtip light, and then an outside air temperature probe on the right wing. So this is going great. Super excited uh, to get this bad boy done. And then, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna build a, some sort of a rack mount. So I think I'm gonna kinda use some space over here. I could kinda ceiling mount them, but that's just too much effort. So see uh, uh, wall mount and then push the table over because it's gonna get tight for a little bit but then after this wing is done now that fuselage gets put up on the table upside down we start working on the fuselage and then very quickly after that table goes bye bye once the fuselage gets up on its legs so lots of progress that's the update for today it's a nice occasion where we can build a wing stand we have the need to build a wing stand we'll be done with the left wing tomorrow so i need to figure out what to do with it Oh, this bit is way better. Okay. Somewhere back in the midst of time, there I used to see these things, these little gizmos that. Uh, it looked like a pencil sharpener, and you just take your bit and stick it in it, and it would just. It would uh, sharpen bits for you. Hmm. Should have got one. Well, Tomas, if that flying thing doesn't work out, I think you got a future. Cutting carpet? Yeah. Doing a bang up job. Yeah, sure. Ugh. I'm sure my mom would be really happy to hear that one. Oh, hey. 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 How's it coming, y'all? Oh, it's going good. Almost done. Now, where do you want these in relation to the end? Pulls the room together. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Now we need some accessories. Yeah, um, like a right wing or a left wing and a left wing. Complete. I don't know. Maybe make a patio table out of it and repurpose the carpet for yet another purpose. But I don't know. But for now, it is a complete wing rack. Wow. You know what? We can leave it. We yeah, can just leave it. Yeah, it'll work. Just oh. Push harder. So I just bought this drill press. Um, I was borrowing other people's drill presses uh, to the point where I'm like, ah, maybe I should price them out. 170 bucks, big box store. And what I did, because uh, what I'm working on now is the lift strut to the truss um, brackets. You have to drill out every one of these five holes. Uh, the big one to 7 16, small ones to one quarter. So we're just taking our time, using some lubrication, learning how this works, but kind of nice to have a, a legit tool. Ah! Turn out good. All right, I am super motivated to get this freaking wing done. It's gonna be done tomorrow, all right? I'm holding myself accountable. Let me tell you what all caused a little bit of a delay. Other than already what you know about of just me figuring out how to wrap it and feel good about closing it. There was another delay I haven't told you about yet. Um, I decided, since I'm a YouTuber, I wanna have access to cameras out on the wing. So this is, the, again, the cool thing about experimental aviation, one of the very cool things. I decided to buy some long USB type C cables to get out to the truss so that I can have power and potentially control over my cameras for future YouTube videos. Uh, why not? I'm building it right now. There's never gonna be any better time to get things wired in this wing. So I'm really excited about that, but that did cause a bit of a delay. I had B&H Photo um, 
overnight me two USB C cables uh, 15 feet in length but it took like three days to get here regardless they're here I unwrapped some of the cables that I did before to go ahead and put that USB type C cable in there because this was a bit of a challenge to get through the grommet <clears throat> and it's a nice tight fitting now to fit now so I've got to reloom up that two more things I got to finish well three more things I got to finish up is the truss fitting for the strut so I've got to match drill this get that mounted up um, temporarily not going to tighten it down and then get the landing light brackets mounted take out the landing light because once I get the rivets in for the bottom leading edge, those rivets are gonna be the backstop for the lens. So, couple step process there, but I am motivated to crank and get this bad boy out the door, figuratively, uh, tomorrow. So the third thing is clean up a couple scratches. This is the interior, so I'm not gonna clean off all the ink on the bottom, but I am gonna clean up a couple of these scratches. Good news is you can't really feel them, so they're not, not really deep enough to do any damage, but it'll make me feel better. I got some really fine sandpaper, so I'm gonna clean up those, put it up, and start riveting. It's date night, we're gonna float the river, have a couple of brewskis, so I wanna get a lot done cranking on this before that, and then get, that, get this thing done tomorrow. I'm saying it to you so you can hold me accountable. It's Okay, let me point out something that is a little bit important here is these guys are in the correct position bolts down nuts up and this one's opposite i just did it uh, haphazardly because i'm going to remove everything and clean everything off but it's important to pay attention because of the strut clearance and whatnot so bolts down nuts up so these are correct uh, this one all reverse but again not the final position, just pay attention to the orientation there for clearance. Also, these are now match drilled specific to everything. So you want to keep, if you remove everything, you want to have everything marked so that you can then line everything back up. Let's do it. So Milwaukee made this aftermarket extension to the uh, rivet gun, which is, comes in handy for these little tight to reach spaces. So we're gonna try it out. But works pretty darn good. And that's a wrap. Part two of the wing video series is complete with the wing in its rack, the left wing in its rack. Um, I am not going to make you sit through a part three and four for the right wing. A couple of thoughts. I am actually, while I'm dreading doing this whole thing over again on the right wing, I'm taking a different approach, which is uh, challenging myself to do a better job than I did on the left wing. Um, I think that's gonna be easy, an easy goal to meet for a couple reasons. One is I've obviously already done a wing and I've learned a lot. Number two is I've already prepped a lot of the parts. The spars are pretty much ready to go, so that's gonna um, be a blast. I'm, however, I'm losing my 
intern, Tomas, is uh, down in New Orleans fishing with his dad and his girlfriend comes back here, so uh, his summer's pretty much done. But I'm so thankful to you, Tomas, so thanks again for that. It was awesome spending time with you. I hope you learned something and I uh, can't wait to fly it with you. Um, okay, back to the wing. What I'm looking forward to is, oh, Andrea, she's gonna, uh, hopefully you'll see her in a video. She's uh, 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 pretty much family and she's amazingly handy. I'm so super excited to have her kind of join the project and help out. Um, what else? I don't have to mess with pitot tube on this. I do have to mount the outside air temperature probe on the right wing. So I am gonna take a week off to go to Oshkosh. I don't know when this is gonna air. It's probably gonna air after Oshkosh, let's be honest. But hopefully that was a blast. But give me a thumbs up if you don't mind, if you think I've earned it. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd appreciate you hitting the subscribe and notification bell so that you're made aware of when I drop the videos. It also helps the algorithm. Shouldn't care, but it's just a fun challenge as I've kind of mentioned before. So what's next? Uh, late summer antics, um, getting the tail cone built and then attached to the cage. And then I've got to take uh, three months and go to, to uh, training and all that. So it's gonna slow down just a bit. My video uploads are gonna slow down just a bit as well because I'm not gonna film this uh, build of the right wing. And that's the other thing that's gonna accelerate the right, the right wing over the left wing is that I'm just not gonna film it. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you guys joining me. Until next time, you're clear direct. Friday. I'll let the shoots. Cheers. Life is good. Is that baby? Life is grand. Mm. Life is grand. I've never said that before in my life.